The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. Guardian Radio AM. Today is Thursday, Thursday, December 15th, and it's a little after 11 o'clock in the morning. And once again, this is C.A. Nuri, and I shall be your host today as we continue to have our discussion about diabetes. As many of you may know, um, I am now a diabetic, a type 2 diabetic, actually, and um, come August, or since August, I've been diagnosed with such, right? And during my journey, to treat my diabetes. I, I was given uh, my own doctor, uh, an internist, and she's going to explain what that is. And I brought my doctor on, uh, Dr. Diana Bannister. I got her name just escaping just now. And I'm also brought my, who was assigned to me, my dietitian, who is Mrs. Yvette Strawn. Mrs. Yvette Strawn is joining me via Zoom. Um, so I'm going to check to make sure she's there so she can join in this conversation. Hello, Mrs. Strawn, are you there? Good morning, Mr. Nuri. I am here and ready to go. Yes. So I, I was assigning both uh, Diana Bannister and uh, Mrs. Strawn uh, to treat my diabetes. And we're going to be having a conversation on that. What happens post-diagnosis uh, when you become an old patient? I didn't understand what the hell, what's a, I say, what the hell is an old patient. What is an old patient, right? And this is where Dr. Bannister come in to reintroduce, to remind people of my story. And um, for your, uh, for those who wasn't listening before, I, I had the, my numbers was 1,280 for a glucose count. And uh, apparently that caused me to go to the hospital in the emergency, emergency room. Uh, a regular um, uh, numbers would be between uh, 70 to 140-ish. And, and Dr. Banzo will correct these numbers when I call. Um, when you have an, uh, like a diabetic, like near di diabetic, um, you're like 170, 200. When you reach 300, they start saying, man, something wrong. You may have to be uh, admitted to the hospital, like 400. I was all the way up to 1,000 odd, right? Uh, at, in fact, at one point in time, I had a record at Doctor's Hospital whilst I was there. But I want to introduce um, uh, Dr. Diana Bannister, who is an internist. She's an internist at the Internal Medicine Associates, uh, which is located on Dalswell Street. But I want her to properly introduce herself in terms of qualification, and then we get into my story again, okay? So go ahead, Dr. Bannister. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Nuri, and good day to you and your listening audience. So my name is Dr. Diana Bannister. I'm an internal medicine specialist. Um, I work both in the public and the private sector. Um, currently, I am um, associated with um, the Internal Medicine Associates, which is a group of internal medicine specialists. Um, and we work to provide inpatient and outpatient um, care for complex medical issues involving adults. So um, it's good to be back here on this platform. Good. It's good to have you back, and it's good to be alive to talk to you. Yes, um, discussing health and wellness once again, particularly during the holiday season. Uh, so just to kind of recap, so Nuri was admitted to hospital back in August of this year, diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. He did present as a diabetic emergency. Um, at the time, his serum glucose was 1,360-odd, which mm -hmm. was the highest that I had seen up until that time, and his A1C was 12.5. Is that and good or bad, by the way? Just that's bad. Bad, okay. bad, bad, bad. Okay, bad. Yeah. And so, um, thankfully, Mr. Nuri was um, treated and discharged, and ever since then, um, we have continued to uh, manage uh, his diabetes I'm in the outpatient setting with a combination of medications, a diet, and other lifestyle modifications. And so I'm very happy and very proud to um, to say that Mr. Nuri has been very successful in managing his diabetes. He has he has adhered to the guidance and advice of his physician and the dietitian and other persons involved in his care. And so, um, as I had mentioned, his A1C was 12.5, and today um, his A1C is now six. Uh, so for persons who may not be aware of what an A1C is, an A1C is that number that we use not only to diagnose diabetes, but we also use it to monitor 
a patient's progress once they've been started on medications and they have commenced uh, lifestyle and dietary modifications. So I cut it in half from 12.5 so to 6. So he essentially cut his A1C in half. And so an A1C tells us your average glucose over a three-month period. And so back then, your average glucose was about 310. Today, your average glucose with your due diligence to medication, diet, and exercise is about 120. Okay. So, and just for listening, yeah. audience, 310 is bad? Oh, yeah. Bad, bad, bad. And normal, what does 310 mean? Well, 310, well, just for reference, a normal blood glucose is supposed to be between 70 and 120. Okay. So that's the range that you should be. Mm-hmm. Okay? Um, and so for someone with an A1C of 12.5, that means that on any given day, if we take a blood, blood draw, your glucose is going to be over 300. Mm. Okay? Which is twice... Over to, or more than twice that of the normal range. And remind the listening audience about the effects if it, it's continued to be over 300, uh, 400 type thing. Right. So like we had mentioned, um, if you have persistently elevated blood glucose, you can, prevent, you can present in a diabetic emergency, you're extremely dehydrated, you're, you're near to being comatose, you can have kidney injury, um, and of course long-term effects of uncontrolled diabetes it's multi-organ, right? So you can have, you can develop blindness, you can develop um, cardiovascular disease, heart attack, stroke. You can develop kidney disease and end up on dialysis. You can develop peripheral neuropathies, um, amputations as a result. Um, you're prone to infections. Um, also, uh, they're not able to perform sexually because of excess glucose. It affects everything. Mm-hmm. Right? So, yeah. So that's the importance of maintaining a normal glucose level. So let's talk about outpatient so I can get um, mm-hmm. Mrs. Strawn into the conversation shortly. Mm-hmm. Um, so you released me. I could have gone home. Yes. Right? Yes. I started to visit you like every so often. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And um, you assigned medicine, medications to me. Yes. Okay. So, Explain that. Right. So initially when you were discharged from hospital, we had you on insulin. Mm-hmm. We had you on pre-meal insulins and uh, long-acting insulin at night in addition to oral medications. And with time, we were able to come off the insulin, right? Mm -hmm. I think we came off, I took you off of it after about a month, Mm -hmm. month and a half. Yes. Um, And then eventually we were able to stop all of the insulin. So we started with the pre-meal and then we eventually came off the long acting. And so now uh, Mr. Nuri is just on oral medications. And that is a good thing. and I always try to encourage my patients, you know, to, to really adhere to medication adherence, to adhere to lifestyle modifications, because they always ask about, can I come off this insulin? And I'm saying, um, I usually say, unless they are type 1, obviously, that, hey, if you do all of those things, you bring your A1C down, then we can, in fact, scale back some of your medication. And again, for my listening audience, mm-hmm. um, if I was on insulin and... Uh, what does that mean in contrast only on medication and, and have to take insulin? So if you're on insulin, if you're requiring insulin as a type 2 diabetic, that means that your A1C is high. It's at least over 7.5, mm-hmm. right? Um, so it means that your A1C is exceptionally high and that if it's that high or higher, that you may not be able to be controlled adequately with just oral medications. And so we would have to add an insulin as well. Mm-hmm. So that's why getting the A1C down is so important. Um, because it allows us to kind of scale back on the medications once your A1C starts to get normalized. Okay. Mm-hmm. So my A1C started to get normalized, which mm-hmm. is now mm-hmm. down to six, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so I was being, I was taken off of insulin. I don't have to take the yeah. one when I take for food every day. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have to take the one when I take overnight every yes. day. And this mm-hmm. I stuck. And I, now I have medication. Yes, all right? medication. And just for entertainment, which medication are you on? All right. So you're currently on Janumet mm-hmm. and you're on Jardians. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so that's what I'm on now, yeah. just in case people are asking, because I know people mm-hmm. always have an opinion on, what did you take in, or how do you manage this, mm-hmm. uh, your, your glucose count, whatever it is, and this is what I take, right, mm-hmm. to maintain mm-hmm. myself. And of course, I own a, a, some kind of hypertension one. Yeah, you're on um, Lisinopril, and then you're on a cholesterol-lowering drug, Yes, Crestor. yes, I want to make yes. that. So also, mm-hmm. the doctor, uh, doctors, they assign me a dietitian. Yes. Right? I'm get, coming to you now, uh, Mrs. Strawn. Mrs. Strawn, you still there? I'm still here, good. Mr. Nuri. So they assign me a dietitian. Who's Mrs. Strong? Then she start talking about pharmacy and we have a good conversation. <laughs> you know when you're enjoying the, the conversation? And so I go on in all kind of detail about our profession and, and our professionalism and stuff like that. But I want to know what is a dietitian and why did they assign me a dietitian? 
Well, good morning to the listening audience. Good morning, Mr. Nuri. Good morning, Dr. Bannister. Thanks for welcoming me here to be a part of this uh, comprehensive multidisciplinary team. Um, first, I wanted to start with the a patient-centered approach with you being Mr. Nuri, the patient, it's important that your doctor knows exactly, which Dr. Bannister has already proven, knows exactly in terms of the care, the comprehensive care, what medication as well as supportive service to refer you to. And that is where you you got in contact with me as a dietitian nutritionist to provide you with education about food. So a nutritionist or dietitian really talks to educate the patient on their how food impacts uh, their general health, overall health and well-being, as well as if they have been diagnosed with either a chronic disease. food choices that will help with your overall care. So that's where we start. Okay. And um, like, I, I know I, I came in to meet you, right? And we had an entire session. It's like an hour plus session, right? And then you start saying um, rice of sugar and, 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 and then you start saying counting them. You've got to be this size meat, uh, this much of starch, this much of vegetables, right? And I want you to go over that too. Uh, how important is knowing what um, what sugar is in each food and um, what can you eat and, and what should you look out for? Good question, Mr. Nuri. So I think the first thing with most um, persons with diabetes is a lack of understanding or knowledge, food and knowledge deficit. So we, like you said, we had a full one hour session. So it's first understanding the sugars. Where are the sugars lying if I eat this? Will this convert into sugar um, or glucose, the more scientific name, and impact my blood glucose levels? So we sit down, we talk about the the myths. Okay, so meat, fried meat or fried fish. So if I eat fried fish versus baked fish, that's going to impact my sugar. But that's not correct because we're talking about protein. So we're really looking with diabetes as a problem with metabolizing carbohydrates. And so when I say that word carbohydrates, people are like, I'm sure Ms. Nero like, what? You talk to me about That's carbohydrates. That's what I'm saying, this carbohydrate word big. Go, but go ahead. <laughs> it's kind of big and scientific. So first we start with the carbohydrates. So you, we then have to get you to the point to understand what is a carbohydrate, which food groups have carbohydrates that turn into glucose or sugar. So we say, we talk, talk, talk about the starches. So that's where your rice comes in there because the rice is, is a starch. And when you eat it, it breaks down into blood glucose, into sugar that will impact your blood glucose. So can you have it? Of course you can have it. But then you'd have to know how much grams of carbohydrates based on your serving size. Like if you have a cup of rice versus a half a cup or most behemoths, a half a plate of rice is going to give you about maybe 70 to 80 grams of carbs. And you know I like rice. <laughs> and when you go to the Chinese restaurant, the whole plate is rice. So I, I, so when you told me that I only could have a, a cup of rice, that changed my whole eating habits. What do you mean a cup of rice? I can't get full of a cup of rice. But you said there's sugar and glucose inside rice and thing. But go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you can have the rice, but you have to portion it. But then that's a good point you made. Like how then would you get full? Like there are certain foods which is more satiating or makes you feel full. Like if you start with a, a, a broth soup and also you have protein. Now protein, once it breaks down, scientifically, it breaks down into amino acid. We're not talking about carbohydrate. So that means if you go to the Chinese restaurant and now you're saying, okay, I have this one cup of rice. Okay, because Ms. Ms. Strawn said that's the limit. But then I can have some sautéed, um, um, broccoli and chicken because we're already low on the broccoli and the carbohydrates and the protein there, the chicken isn't going to pack your sugars. 
So we start with the starches. Uh, like I said, an understanding that if you eat starch and then you say, okay, well, tell me about all the groups, all the food groups that contain starch. So we talk about the breads, the cereals, the rice, the pasta. Okay. Mm -hmm. So secondly, then we would go to fruits. So you look at uh, But oh. Ms. Strong, I, I want you to pause there briefly because you call all of my favorite foods just now, mm -hmm. right? So you're saying that I need to know how much of in, I'm intaking with pasta and bread and, 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 and rice, that I need to limit that, that amount when, you, when I'm a diabetic, that's what you're saying? Yes. So where we start, Mr. Nuri, is what is a serving size of the bread? So instead of, you have two choices. You can either count carbs or you can count a serving of, of the carbs. For example, you, you get a Wonder Bread, you get a sleeve of Wonder Bread, you take out one slice. One slice is one carbohydrate serving, which translates into 15 grams of carbohydrates. So if you're having a full turkey sandwich, so how many slices of bread you're having right now? Um, my, my, you, <laughs> When I have on a turkey slice of uh, sandwich, I have in three slices of bread, then the turkey. Oh, but now okay. you're saying that is too much, and I'm trying to understand. <laughs> well, let, let's just go with the three slices then, okay. because you, your, your turkey sandwich is more like a BLT at yeah, this yeah, point. Yes, then I, then I put in the vegetables, the lettuce, and the tomatoes then. <laughs> okay, so if you choose the three slices of bread, now that's three servings, or I then that equates to 45 grams of carbs. So... We start there with persons so they understand where the carbs is, how much it is based on the portion size, and then we also tie it into their insulin if they are insulin management, if they are on pre-meal insulin. So then to say how much units would cover those three slices of bread or how many units would cover of insulin, Humalog, would cover the 45 grams of carbs. Nice. So basically, you, you match my medication. So because at first I was on the pre, pre meal one and of uh, Humalog. And okay. that my food intake was based on that medication. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, go ahead. So we, we then look at what's happening after you would have digested that food and how two hours later, an hour and a half to two hours later, when we spoke about, okay, it's important, Mr. Nuri, for you to test your blood sugars, either pre-meal, just to know what, you're, what sugars you're dealing with before you start to eat the, the grams of carbohydrates. And then after you eat, to see, one, how your body's responding, not just to the food that you're eating, but also the insulin that you've been recommended by your physician. Hmm. So let's talk fruits. I, oh, I thought fruit. fruits is good, right? Fruits is healthy. I like grapes. I like oranges. So, and then you, you start warning me about eating certain fruits. And I want to know mm. why you warn me about eating certain fruits. Mr. Nuri, Mr. Nuri. This you see is, what fruits I call them. <laughs> this, is, this is like one of the, the second or number one myths in the Bahamas because... I didn't call have, Mangolo. Because you know, I can eat mango no matter what you tell I me, but we, go ahead. I think we spoke about I know, the that's why I didn't want to bring it up, but I said, let me bring it up for the conversation. <laughs> I remember the mango, Elizabeth, because it was in the summer in August, and, and that was, may have been one of your triggers right there. Mm -hmm. But the myth that um, your diabetic and healthy foods, such as fruits, wouldn't impact your blood sugars. So we have to then manage that myth and manage the risk with um, consuming so much fruits. So I just want to tell your listening audience, if you have a diabetic or a patient or a family member who is in the hospital with diabetes, we don't want to bring them a fruit basket. We don't want to... What? Because my work sent me one big fruit basket full of bananas. <laughs> and my, remember, my glucose is all the way 1,300. And I had a big, the major basket full of bananas and, and, and strawberries and stuff. And you trying to say that ain't a good thing? It's healthy for you. Can you have it? Yes. But what the, we started with the point that we try to identify which foods have carbohydrates. That's step one. Step two is then, especially if it's a healthy food, yes, we're going to encourage you to have it. But because it has carbohydrates, we have to consider the allowance. We have to consider the portion amount. So let's talk about your grapes. So instead of eating the whole bag of grapes, or a bowl of grapes, we then scale down a bit to say 
let's just eat about 17 to 20 grapes because 17 to 20 grapes starts with our magic number serving size of 15 grams of carbohydrates, which is the, your one serving right there. I say one serving right there. I, I hear you. I hear you. Okay, mm -hmm. and for my listening audience, um, I want you to talk about a banana. My family is a banana-oriented family where my, my, my daughters bring, a, bring me bananas and say, here, Daddy. My wife's telling me, cut that in half, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I want people to understand, like a typical fruit of banana, especially for a diabetic, how much glucose is in a typical banana there? Or what I should okay. I be looking at? What, what is my goal when I eat in fruits? When you're eating fruits, you, so you want to start with some of the, the, the lower glycemic fruit um, choices because then they, they have a hint of sweetness, but they have less, that in terms of their impact on the blood sugar, is a little less, and that would be your berries. So, for example, a, cu a cup and a half of berries, you can have a cup and a half of strawberries or blueberries versus a half of, of a medium banana would give you the same amount of grams of carbohydrates. So I then say, well, to be more satiating, maybe you should eat the bigger portion of fruit with the same carbohydrate content, which is the cup, a cup and a half of the strawberries versus the half of a banana. If you're saying, oh, this half a banana is, is, is really not gonna cut it. So with the fruits, you, you look at that first. So you get stuff like the berries that are lower glycemic, and then you have pears and the apricots. Now, when you're getting into the mangolas and the grapes and the pineapples, we realize that those particular fruits are, are a little more higher glycemic and then causing more impact on, on your blood sugars. So you can meet with a dietitian like myself, and we go through all of those things in a more depth in terms of, okay, let's choose these fruits and let's see how it impacts your, your sugars. And then we would know that I, preferably these would be a better choice for you in terms of overall management. So, and I, I just want ahead. to intervene um, and to, you know, to really um, reiterate the importance of a multidisciplinary approach to the management of diabetes, right? So we work as a team, me and Mrs. Strawn. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I diagnose somebody with diabetes and I'm treating them with medications, um, my management would be incomplete without the inclusion of a dietitian without the inclusion of somebody, you know, like an exercise coach, et cetera, to help persons, um, you know, target all of those different aspects of management because it's just not medication. And I tell my patients all the time, it makes no sense to be adherent to your medication, but you eat whatever you want because you're really working against yourself. Mm -hmm. So Mrs. Strawn is really showing the importance um, of diet in overall management and control of diabetes and, and even other chronic diseases. You know, it's very important. You cannot push diet to the side and say, you know, I just can take my medication because you'll be working against yourself. Mm. So, yeah. So, um, um, Mrs. Strawn, so diet is important. Mind you, you are a dietitian, so by, by the, just the word of it, right? I am technically on a diet because I eat less now. Um, I, we did two different programs. One we, where we are counting the amount of calories, I guess, in a serving. And I, I found that... Uh, tedious for me trying to memorize the the number and then we experimented with where I can do site measuring right mm -hmm. when I could say hey I know what a typical my, my regular size plate is I know where the, the meat protein is supposed to be look like and the size I know where the the starch how much starch I should be look I want to hear more about that for those persons who are not good at counting calories and, and numbers um, Talk about that site one that you did, we mentioned with me. Oh, definitely, Mr. Nuri. So what you're referring to is that, yes, correct a diet, but we like to consider it a dietary pattern in terms of what you actually are prescribed by the dietitian nutritionist. So if you are on a DASH diet, which is more a Mediterranean diet, and then we work with certain methods if you're not, if you're counting carbs, or we're gonna refer to this method that you spoke about, which we call the, the plate method for persons who don't wanna count carbs, who don't wanna be like, okay, or measure. So I took the plate with you, mm -hmm. just a regular nine inch plate, 
or those containers that most um, food vendors or restaurants provide takeout meals in, where there's uh, the big portion the, uh, on the bottom and on the top, they have the other quadrants, a quarter on the left and a quarter on the right, and then half of the plate is what do we put there, most of the rice, right? So we start with the plate method to then visualize with your dietary pattern to help you then say, okay, when you're taking up your food or somebody is taking up your food, to be reminded of the fact that, okay, we're looking at the food groups with carbohydrates. So what portion of my plate then should I put the starch? Mm -hmm. So we start with the little small quarter of the plate for your bean and rice for your pasta, for your potatoes, for your, what else we have? If you're having the Gricks, we forgot about the Gricks also for breakfast. So that goes in a quarter of the plate. So we start there. Okay. And persons then realize, so do I have to get a container like this? No, just visualize it. If you want a container, um, there's um, reusable ones that you can do, but it's a visual method for you to then portion correctly your carbohydrate groups. So we start with the quarter plate for the starches. Okay, so what go in the portion where the rice is supposed to go? Was the next question, correct? Mm -hmm. So then we talk about then the healthier stuff, like the vegetables, your salad, your broccoli, your cucumbers, your tomatoes, oh, your okay. spinach, and you want to put that on half of the plate. Whole half. That I want to say half of the plate. <laughs> I was going to put it in the next quarter, but go ahead. It's half of the plate. Half <laughs> of the plate, which is your filler right there, okay? It can be raw. It can be cooked. We would prefer, you know, more nutrients are in uncooked foods, but you can, you want that in half of the, the plate. So the other quarter then is now we're talking about your lean protein, okay? And it got to be so lean. Right. We talk about trimming the fat if you if you're poor if you're eating pork or if you're gonna do chicken breast or if you're gonna eat the chicken thigh, you're gonna pull off the skin. Or you know, the wings is kind of difficult to pull off the skin, but you're gonna put that in that portion, quarter of the plate. And then we go to the fact that, okay, then how are you preparing this protein? We, we would prefer, based on, as we know, with diabetics, they may also have a risk for high cholesterol and saturated fat and um, intake of cholesterol will contribute to that. So then we talk about the method of the preparation of your meats and protein. So you prefer broil, bake, or grill would be a better option in overall care. But even though the, the method of the method in which you prepare the meat doesn't really impact the sugars that much unless you're doing like a real sweet barbecue sauce that then will impact your sugars. So, but then we go to that point where that portion is your protein. Okay. I see we're calling for a short break, but when I'm on the next side, I want to know, uh, to ask Dr. Bannister, how important it is to prick your finger and take your glucose count after the meal? You know, I want to know that on what time so that this in audience could have that in their regiment. But we're going to take a short break now at 11.35 and not at 11.45. <laughs> Tease it there, curve it. Uh, short break and we'll be right back. A local paper in Grand Bahama is back every Tuesday as a section of the Nassau Guardian. Available at local stores, gas stations, pharmacies, Western Bakery, and Bellevue Gifts. Daily and, of course, on Tuesdays, too. Want to reach your Grand Bahama audience? Then call Barefoot Marketing at 827-4578 or message them for ad rates via their Facebook page. Advertising opportunities now include classified ads, too. Keep up with all the latest Grand Bahama news in the Guardian newspaper every Tuesday. One in every four people in the Bahamas face some level of food insecurity. Through our annual Feed 5000 program, AML Foods remains steadfast in our commitment to help those struggling with hunger and will donate 5000 to provide holiday meals to families this Christmas. But we need your help. From November 14th to December 19th, show your support and donate at the register at any Solomon's, Costright, Solomon's Fresh Market, Exuma Markets, or Domino's locations in New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma. Together, Let's put an end to hunger. 
Remember when Zoom was just a sound effect? When your living room wasn't your gym? When a cough didn't scare people away? That was the good old days. And thankfully, they are coming back. As things return to normal, remember it is essential to be fully immunized against all vaccine preventable diseases like COVID-19, diphtheria, tetanus, measles, and influenza. This message is brought to you by PAHO WHO, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the Caribbean Development Bank, the Government of Canada, and the United States of America. This is Warren McCartney, and I am wishing you and your family all the happiness in the world this holiday season and all of God's abundant blessings in the new year. Here's to hoping you have a great 2022. Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. This is Dwight Strawn with Morning Blend. On behalf of the crew and my co-hosts, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and an incredibly blessed and prosperous New Year. And welcome back to Garden Radio AM. I'm here with uh, internist, internist uh, Dr. Diana Bannister. And of course, I'm here with Mrs. Yvette uh, Strong, who's a dietitian, and they're basically going over my diabetes and what I did to get my, n my numbers uh, lowered by half. I was a 12.5, what is it, AD, what is it called? A1C. Again? A1C, mm -hmm. and then I'm now a 6, and I'm mm -hmm. doing well. And I did it through um, my basically watching what I eat, and I got instruction from my dietitian, uh, uh, Mrs. Strong. And of course, I, I'm still on medication, I'm not on insulin anymore. And um, I am the that Mrs. Strong was telling me or telling us, the listening audience, about a nine inch plate where a quarter of the plate should be your starch, a quarter of your plate should be your lean meat, and half of the plate, my lord of mercy, needs to be basically bush type things, right? <laughs> uh, some kind of tomatoes and, and, and green things on the plate. Correct. Yes. So I, I get it. I get it. And my plate continues to be that. I have a lot of, between the good thing I have is coleslaw, and I, I, I'd be lucky if I get that. Um, but I do have a lot of greens um, in my plate as half of the plate when I'm eating. So I'm, I'm assuming I'm doing good. Well done, Mr. Mary. Good. Well done. I'd like to get pat on my back, so I appreciate you saying that. But it's the holidays, right? And, of course, I can be cheating because, you know, a, a, a Negro got to eat his ham and turkey. You know, plenty of ham, the salty one, right? And I, I need information on how I can survive Christmas. I need to survive Christmas and... A pound cake is what I plan to eat. I, I, I pound cake and a Christmas cake. And I, I, I already started eating my rum cake. Uh, just recently, my, my numbers spiked to 180, and I panicked. I said, Lord, I pray Dr. Bannister don't ask me for my numbers to see this, right? But I got to eat cake. It's Christmas. And I want to know, what should I be doing um, during Christmas? Uh, Dr. Bannister, you start the conversation, and we go on to uh, Mrs. Strong. Yeah, so... Uh, the holidays are a very precarious time for persons who are trying to manage chronic disease, particularly diabetes, because there's just an abundance of food and alcohol, and a lot of persons, unfortunately, tend to fall off the wagon during this time. They don't fall off the wagon. Um, and so we really try to encourage persons to, to kind of, you know, stay on the, on the wagon, you know what I mean? Don't sabotage all of the work um, and the, you know, the results that you have, you have you've gained over the last year. You know, so, uh, you know, my tips would be um, particularly with the amount of food that's now available and that's, you know, that's around during the holiday times is to really watch your portion sizes. Um, we tend to be very starch heavy during the holidays. And um, my tips would be to, um, you know, choose one starch, you know, or two starches and, you know, try and do it in a decreased portion. Um, you know, there's so much um, starch. There's rice, there's potato salad, there's macaroni, there's stuffing. Um, and, you know, so if you're a diabetic, you know, you, the, the biggest thing that you can, the best thing that you can do really is portion size, portion control, and probably choose, choose two out of the four that may be available to you. Also, it's also important during the holiday season is alcohol. You got to really be careful of your alcohol intake. A lot of people don't realize how much sugar 
is actually in alcoholic beverages, especially those cream-based liquors like your Baileys and your eggnogs and stuff like that. Um, we need to really be careful with our consumption. Who oh, my eggnog? Plenty, plenty sugar. 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 Plenty sugar. sugar. Like in Baileys, like a, in a 100 mils of Baileys, it's about 19.5 grams of sugar. So how much eggnog can I drink? So if you see, you even tell me how much I can drink, though. <laughs> well, I, I would say you shouldn't be consuming it daily. I wouldn't consume it daily. You know, you know but, Christmas is 12 days, but, right? But, but you, can, you, can, you can have a cup. At, Every day. At, no. For 12 you days. You can have a cup at dinner. Mr. Nuri, at, at, at your Mr. Christmas dinner. I try to work with y'all, know, but you're only working with me <laughs> for Christmas. This is Christmas, and I have 12 days of Christmas, and then I already have half of the plate of vegetables, mm -hmm. right? Let like, me, right. Let me piggyback on oh Dr. Lord. Bannister yes, Mr. in terms of <laughs> answering your question with the eggnog or as with any other drink or food. We know that the holidays are a time when we get together with family and friends. We focus on food, the macaroni and cheese, the yam, the candy the yams, the stuffing, who has the best lobster stuffing, but, and then we have the drinks as well. So it's really about looking at your swaps, like, or how you're going to save. So if you're going to, you know, you don't, you don't want that um, coconut rice from, if, especially if your family is from Andres, right? Mm. You want to ensure that, okay, I'm going to save on the rice. So I'm going to have a piece of turkey and I'm going to have the coleslaw mm. and I'm going to have the, uh, maybe some the canned beets, but I'm going to save that because I want to have the stuffing. I'm not having the rice, so I can then have the stuffing. Mm. So one starch here with my meal now with the coleslaw and the, the turkey and the beets. So that's about maybe 20 grams of carbohydrates. And then I'm going to drink this eggnog at that meal because then I'm going to, I'm really looking at this is now a, the, the quarter of my plate that I've saved to have this eggnog. So it's really about swapping and not really putting a no list of foods to not mm -hmm. say no, mm -hmm. but then balancing, yeah, finding a control. balance with your holiday festive. So Ms. Strong, that means I still could eat anything or everything in reason, but it basically it's the quantity. Is that now, you don't want to, now that picking and tasting and tasting here still will impact. So you're going to say, yes, you can look and decide what is something that you didn't have last year or didn't have for a while. You know, if you have a family member who you know is only going to bake Benny cake once a year, you know, the famous ba um, Bahamian Benny cake. So I want to save on having this, a taste of this treat. So you would can then allocate that because you didn't have you you don't see penny cake all around every year or you don't see the little piece of fruit cake. But then I'm gonna swap it out with the rice or the eggnog because then I know that the sugars will then add up. Um, so and just to be clear to my listening audience, right? If I'm gonna eat cake and sweet things, I need to swap it out. It, I, I can't technically I can't be eating my regular food then add in the sweets. I have to take right. out one of the ingredients, uh, one of my starchy stuff, and then I could add a piece of cake to keep the, the same number. That's what we call it exchange. It, You're I got exchanging an exchange. it. Exactly. So say exchange. Yeah, portion control, um, you know, swapping out. And then you also have some low sugar alternatives as well. So I'd mentioned that Bailey's, the regular Bailey's, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's very popular around the holiday time. Mm -hmm. That has about 19.5 grams of sugar in just 100 mils. Oh, my gosh. But they have a low or reduced sugar um, reduced sugar version. Okay. You know what I mean? And so, you know, you, you can, as, a, as somebody who may be a diabetic or just wants to reduce their wants to reduce their sugar intake, that's also an alternative. You know what I mean? So you can look for low sugar um, alternatives to some of your favorite, um, favorite things, mm -hmm. right? Yes. In and meals. also yeah. determine, just to piggyback um, Dr. Bannister, that if you if you are going to have your little festive drink, instead of maybe mixing with a ginger ale, you can use the tonic, I'm sorry, the, the club soda, mm -hmm. which has like zero, zero grams of sugar as your mixer with a dash of lime or something, instead of using your also the cranberry juice, if you're having some type of uh, a mixer. So you have to watch out for the mixer also with the drink that you're having. Okay, and, and Ms. Strong, quickly tell me some things that has zero, zero carb carbohydrates. You did mention club soda. Uh, in terms of the meal, um, mm -hmm. what can I eat on my plates? I would say, I ain't got to count that. Okay, so we talked about the protein. So unless you have the, the ham with the sweet sauce, so let's, 
oh, you want to have a slice of ham or a slice of turkey, you, you're pretty good there. You get the, you get the go on the, the turkey, the stuffing, we have the carbs. So that's the, you have more of protein in the, the turkey, more of the protein in the ham. If you're having, let's say, uh, a lobster salad, you, that's also full. If they, you have some fried grouper or baked grouper, some persons have fish or boiled fish the morning of, especially when Saxons has won. And we, 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 we then come back and have um, <laughs> our boiled that. fish. Mm-hmm. So you can have your boiled fish, maybe leave out the Johnny cake. So th- these are some um, zero gram stuff. If you have, I know some persons do a peanut brittle. Um, and it, it is a little better choice. It, it does have a little sugar depending on how you make it. But like peanuts in itself is rich in protein. So you can have some peanut snacks or almond snacks um, also as a part of your, 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 your snacking options during the holidays. Um, so off the back, those are some of the ideas. The coleslaw, um, I know there's different versions of which persons make coleslaw. Some just do, I, I think a Jamaican version doesn't even use mayo. It's more like a pickleese kind of thing or the Creole pickleese. And that's pretty healthy. So you can look at those type of options uh, as fillers or your sides. Now, when we get into the macaroni and the potato salad, we already know. <laughs> we got to swap those out, exchange if we're going to have those that um, eggnog. And Dr. Bannister, how important it is to check your glucose level during this time? Well, it's... And I don't, mm-hmm. I don't add to that. Mm-hmm. And like how I spike to 180, mm-hmm. recommendation of what do I do? Right. So, I mean, you've been doing well so far and you had that spike. So you now need to go back and look at your... And I also encourage persons to keep a food diary too, mm-hmm. right? Keep a food diary and track what you're eating um, and see what may, what may have I had, had consumed rather when I had that spike, Right? Mm-hmm. And you think you mentioned the, the candy cane? Yeah, I eat candy cane. <laughs> <laughs> right? So it's going to be important to keep a food diary. Um, I encourage patients to check their blood glucose before and two hours after um, consuming their meal. Right? Because as I had mentioned, uh, in persons who are non-diabetic, everybody really, once you eat, your blood sugar is going to spike. Right? Mm-hmm. But if you're non-diabetic your blood sugar is going to go back down to its normal range in about two hours post that meal, right? And so if you're a diabetic and you're on medications, we want to see if the medications are working, Mm -hmm. right? So we ask patients to, again, check their their glucose about two hours after consumption of their meal Mm -hmm. to see whether their medications are, are working effectively. But of course, it's also going to be dependent on what you eat as well, right? And we talked about foods that... Um, spike your blood sugar and have an increased glucose load. So like persons may have heard about things like glycemic index, which Mm -hmm. really refers to um, foods that spike your blood sugar. And then you have the glycemic load, which talks about the amount of total carbohydrates in that food. And it's going to be important to know um, the, the foods that would have high glycemic indexes, high glycemic load, because it's going to help you to regulate your blood sugar. Right? So it's very important um, to monitor your blood glucose, to keep a diary, even when you uh, have reached a, a point of control, because this is not just something you do for a few months and then stop. This is a lifestyle. I don't even want to call it a diet, right? This is a lifestyle change. This is something that you're going to continue to do indefinitely, right? Correct. And so it Dietary should be, pattern. Yeah. <laughs> so this should become a part. This should become a part of your, uh, your routine. So monitoring your, your blood sugar should become something that you do just, you know, just like brushing your teeth. Okay. Really. I, I have a text who asked, how do I, they get in contact with you? Okay, so... Both of you, actually. Well, um, I can be contacted at um, our clinic. Um, the number is 302-3321. Uh, um, that's the Internal Medicine Associates. We're located in the Luden Building. And that's on Dowswell Street. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you, Mrs. Strawn? I'm also at Doctors Hospital. Just want to let persons know, as well as those listening audience or physicians, we do um, have an outpatient nutrition clinic, so you can book at the SEAM uh, clinic with Dr. Ba- Dr. Bannister. Just said the three zero two three three two one direct. You can reach me at three zero two four six four one at the main Doctors Hospital, and. Um, 
you can come with a referral from a physician or you can just walk in on just uh, needing some dietary tips and get the get your appointment um right there on but the let's spot. talk more about that i my my godchild my godchild is heavy set right to the point where we we little concerned right and, and when we we trying to find a dietitian in terms to address his, his issues right um you're saying that I could just walk in with him and say, hey, uh, get some ideas on what to do? Well, preferably we would like to have some lab work if he's having any, any other underlying issues. Like when um, Dr. Bannister referred you, she would have sent a, a referral uh, with your information for me to see that your A1C was 12.5 and really need to work down that over the next three months. So if you do walk in, um, we do have lab services and we do have physicians, the IMA physicians that can see you if there's a, an underlying risk or maybe other than obesity that we want to make sure we have a comprehensive approach in terms of where we're treating you. Because you may be telling me something that, okay, yeah, he's just, your got child is just overweight, but I also want to know um, what else is happening in terms of his overall um, health with the physician's advice that maybe we may be having to work on some other factors other than just the weight control. So you can walk in and book with the nutritionist as well as get any other service done that will help with your godchild child in his overall care. And Dr. Bannister, let's mm -hmm. get some advice to pre-diabetic, not diabetic people. Mm -hmm. Them said who go on to the doctor and, and they say, oh, you know, you, you're pre-diabetic, you know, you need mm -hmm. to do some things. Uh, tell us some things that some those who are pre-diabetic should be doing. Right. So, again, lifestyle modifications are going to be front and center. Um, if you are in that pre-diabetic range, especially if you have a family history, right? Because it's, 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 it's very likely that you can become overtly diabetic, right, with time. So in, in order to prevent that or to decrease the risk of that happening, lifestyle modifications are going to be very important. So diet, um, exercise, right? Um, I, I, can't, I, cannot under, I cannot overemphasize the impact that obesity has on diabetes and diabetes control, right? If you're overweight, you know, you gotta get you need to get on a journey of weight loss. So if you're overweight and you have diabetes, type, it's a problem? Yeah, especially type two. Especially type two. Yes. Because remember I said those fat cells make diabetes control very difficult, right? And so simply losing weight, getting about thirty to forty minutes of exercise in a day. And that can, and you do it based on what you can tolerate, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you can walk the bridge, fine. If you if you can walk by the beach, fine. You know what I mean? If you can run, do that. Whatever is tolerable to you. But try to get in about 30 to 40 minutes of, you know, moderate to intense exercise, right, based on what you are able to do, right? Um, portion control. Bahamians eat... We, our plates are just overabundantly... I hear Mrs. Strong saying one slice of turkey. She right. didn't say one slice of turkey and one <laughs> slice of ham. You know, she just said one, one of each. And, but and, what I, listening. and what I tell people, I say, you know, if you've ever been to a fine dining establishment, you don't get a lot of food. No. Right? The times that I've been to fine dining establishments, I always look at the plate, I'm like, well, I know I can I spent food. $90 on this. And, but when you, when you add up the appetizer, the main course, and the dessert, you're actually full. And I said to myself, you know what? We are, we can be, we can experience satiety or fullness with a lot less food. We are just constantly moving the goalposts, eating more and more and more unnecessarily. You know what I mean? So portion control, you'd be surprised what you can actually get filled on. You know what I mean? People always say, oh, I can get full on that, but you'd be surprised. You know what I mean? And we kind of train our palates, we train our stomachs to eat more and more and more and more when we don't really necessarily have to. So portion control is going to be important for pre-diabetic diet, weight loss. And in some cases, we can start patients on medications if those, um, if those uh, factors aren't enough diet and exercise and weight loss, mm. you know, so. I'm right, back to you, um, um, Ms. Strawn. Um, I'm still talking Christmas time, and mm -hmm. you're basically saying portion control, and, but I'm, I'm thinking, what about a three-course meal, right, where there's soup, salad, uh, dessert, uh, all of that involved? Because I'm thinking I'm at a Christmas party, all these things are happening at the buffet table, right? Uh, what should I be doing going, looking at the buffet table? 
first before the Christmas party, you want to also you want to time your meals. Make sure that you have all of your, especially if you're on insulin, make sure you have you have your medication with you. Doc, Maybe I, eat it. Uh, uh, Mr. Ronnie, they're gonna stop you, right? They're gonna stop you because um, I usually starve myself before I go buy the butler stem, right? Because I, I know I can eat big. So you saying starving myself ain't gonna work when I go and buy the butler stem? No, you don't want to to skip meals to save up for holiday feast. Oh, Lord. Yeah, you're going to okay. overeat. That's you're going to overeat. That's why I'm skipping the meal. Yeah, you're going to overeat, okay? Mm-hmm. And so, and then your sugars are going to be, it's going to be diff- more difficult for you to to manage your blood sugars, okay? Mm-hmm. So you want to at least um, have some snacks, space out, you know, really... Um, not be graphalacious, they, they say, right? In the Bahamian culture. Right. Don't be big eye. No. Big eye big Don't be big eye. eye. Boy, <laughs> graphalacious and big eye. Look at you all people. Go uh, ahead, I'm listening. So you want to definitely um, uh, plan ahead, okay? Sometimes you don't know what they're going to be serving. Um, but if you're going to a restaurant buffet, you kind of know. If you're going to somebody's uh, house, maybe you can ask them, so what's on the menu? You know I'm diabetic or I'm dealing with this. I just want to know what what are my options. So if they don't have the option, you can bring the salad, Mr. Nuri. You can bring the to the party, to the festivity. You can make a nice um, green bean salad or spinach dip mm. and bring because maybe they they didn't consider the fact that you need some of those zero zero um, carbohydrate choices to go apart with go along with the the stuffing or the the little bean and rice so pretty much do not save up for the holiday feast sure. really plan your meals if you're having breakfast and you know that they're gonna serve and sometimes persons are late if you know it's, it's, it's most persons they say they're serving dinner at three most behemoths dinner don't start till but six on a on a christmas day some persons cook a little earlier so you have to consider all of these as these things as a diabetic and and i have about um a minute and a half to go i want you to plan my christmas dinner now right and when i say the butler's them have everything these have everything so i'm going to skip out the rice right now i have a slice of turkey and a slice of ham what else to put on my plate for christmas Okay, so they'll have a toss salad. You can Did you notice I put a slice of turkey and ham? I just let you know. No, because <laughs> so you're you saying one. A, Go ahead. You can, that's fine. <laughs> you could have a, some toss salad with whatever type of um, olive oil based dressing. And then you're going to put, like, you're going to have the stuffing. If they have a lobster stuffing, mm-hmm. you can have about a half a cup of that. And then whatever. So that's your starch there. And let's say they have a, a potato salad. So you can have a, a quarter cup of potato salad and then save your other three or four servings for a little eggnog and a slice of the fruit cake. I appreciate you. I could do that. I, I mean, I could do that. I could physically, but you didn't call it no macaroni, but I could no. do that. <laughs> I could do that. And but. I just want to say for persons, do not allow the holidays to cause you to fall off the wagon of control for your diabetes and your hypertension. January is a long month. Guardian Radio in the AM. Thank you very much.